Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our most reliable teams presented by Xfinity. You want to talk about reliable? How about a team that hasn't lost a single game this year? And that would be the South Carolina Gamecocks at a perfect 32-0, and the only undefeated team on the men's or the women's side, and they will uh, start things off against either Presbyterian or Sacred Heart. But, uh, Autumn, do you have more confidence in this year's team to get it done? Because, remember, they didn't win it last year. I do have more confidence in this team, considering the fact that last year they only had four different players averaging seven or more points. This year you have seven different players, eight or more points, and they are the top three threes in the nation, so making threes as a whole for this team has been crucial with Tahina Pow Pow, Tessa Johnson off the bench, Bree Hall, Raven Johnson, how she's been able to take it personal from last year's Final Four and work on her game, her perimeter game, to take it to the next level and kind of take it personal. Malaysia for Wiley, I mean, my goodness, her layup package is just dangerous. You can score in a variety of ways, whether that's inside or out, but this is a South Carolina team that really relied on their interior game last year and not just with Aaliyah Boston but yeah. attacking the lanes. Now you have an inside out presence and you can take your starting five out and put a new starting five in and not skip a beat. But that's a testament to this group that has came in and waited for their number to be called and have rise to the occasion. So South Carolina essentially cruised through the season but like the last couple of weeks things have been close mm -hmm. and Tennessee was a buzzer beater away from beating South Carolina, what did they expose, do you think, about South Carolina and, and potentially a blueprint to beat them? Well, Tennessee has, uh, has the formula, and they, they're, they're long, they've, they've, they're tall, they have a star in Rakia Jackson. But what they did in that second half when they erased a 23-point deficit was they put Camila Cardoso in high ball screen action with Rakia Jackson, and Jackson got a lot of clean looks at the mid-range or spins off and finds teammates open as the help side defense is rotating. So Tennessee has a, 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 had a special formula, but they also have the personnel to pull it off. But my concern about South Carolina is, and we saw it a little bit in that game, and let's, let's, let's call it what it was. They were lucky to no win doubt. that game. No question. Uh, they, sh they should have lost that game. And the players on this team, while super talented, super deep, we've talked about all that, none of them have had a big game experience, though. Last year's team, although they did come up short, at least they'd all been through fi a Final Four before. This group hasn't had the pressure cooker of the, the one-and-done scenario. That's the only thing. On paper, I have no concerns. That is the one thing I would say. If they get into a tight game in the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight because they're not playing their A game, because if they do play their A game, nobody's beating them. No doubt. But if yeah. they're not playing their A game and then they've got to make plays that they haven't had to make before – I worry that the inexperienced part in these situations comes back to haunt them. Okay. Yeah. I've thought about that too with them. Uh, I think I still have the money at all for the record. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just you never know where that's going to come into play. But for me, the other thing I noticed recently with South Carolina was that they cooled off a little bit shooting-wise. They had a few games where the turnovers were a big issue. I remember texting you, I think it was at the Texas A&M game where they turned the ball over 24 times. Yes, or, it was um, ugly. Not, not one for the, for the eyes. But uh, to me, it's like if they're off in stalls, um, you know, and, and – they get into almost like what happened with the second half of Tennessee, you know, what kind of happens there. So I'm looking to see how their offensive execution and shooting fares down the stretch. And they're, they're a great rebounding team, but they, have, they do have spots in games where they stop rebounding. And that's another thing that happened against Tennessee and allowed the Lady Vols to get back in that game. Yes, yeah, so we saw uh, the fans spoke and they had said that, what was it, 38, 39 percent saying that South Carolina uh, are going to win the NCAA tournament this year. Let's quickly go around the table here. South Carolina or the field? Autumn, we'll start with you. I'm going with South Carolina. I think I'm making that pretty known. Yeah. I mean, it's them versus everybody. The gap is pretty large, in my opinion. Um, just the way they've been able to execute on the offensive end at an efficient rate. Dawn Staley, I mean, just the way she's able to game plan and I actually like that they were battle tested against Tennessee in late game situations and even though Camilla Cardoso had her first three in her career <laughs> I mean you just build confidence in those moments that hey like we need to come together and these are the moments that we need now to have later in March so I like that they had that little moment because you can steamroll past your opponents sure. but who's going to challenge you when it comes down to the most when you have one game on the line or it's going home field Charlie I'm taking the field because, you know, I'm an odds guy, right? And <laughs> 67 is yeah. 
is more than one. You do live in right? Vegas, right? So I guess. You live in yeah. Vegas. You, you, you're going to play the odds. And I, I think last year I did take South Carolina against the field against my better judgment on that, and, and it, it burned me. So I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. I'm going to learn from my mistake. I still think South Carolina is going to win. Okay. Yeah. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the field if I have a choice between the two just because – there are a lot of other really good teams in this tournament. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> I, I, I split that right in half, didn't you I? You did. <laughs> well, I, I feel like I'm kind of with – well, I'm a little bit opposite. I could see the field pulling it out, but I'm going to go with South Carolina because I just feel like at a certain point you have to believe what your eyes tell you. You can't make it overly complicated, although that's, that was my rationale last year when South Carolina – uh, I picked them to win, and they obviously didn't. But I'm going to stick with it. I think this team has something special going. I think just the way that Don Staley has been able to revamp this team, and I, I'm going to predict it now. Tahina Pow Pow is going to hit like a game winner. I don't know why. I just have something with her, you know, being that impact transfer, and it's going to be a three-pointer because that was a weakness from them last year, and they're going to win on one this year. Maybe in the national championship team. game. Is that sure? Are, are you let's, let's go for so it. So you've heard it here. Tahina Pow Pow is making a three-pointer to win the national championship. If that happens. I'm having Alexa buy all my lottery tickets for the rest of my life. <laughs> Flip it. Oregon, too. What about over a Pac-12 team? I mean, it's very mm. possible the combination of Final Fours and championship games that we can get. Ooh, the synergy. <laughs> I need it. I need it. Can they win their third national title in seven years? That is the question uh, that we pose to you in the chat as well. Uh